All right, put the can down. All right, well, one more second. No, put the can down. Okay. All right, all right, Joe, you sing the high part. Hey, you got it. Shoop doo wah, shoop doo wah. Over to the family, talking about my brothers and me. We don't have a pedigree, but we're brothers. Brothers. We might follow different dreams. We might play on different teams. Where it counts behind the scenes, we're brothers. We might march to different drums, we might disagree. Don't you know when trouble comes, you can come to me, you're my family. And curve the light may grow, and new words the wind may blow. Brother, ain't it good to know we're three? Life is full of stress and strife. You lose a love or leave a wife. A brother's a brother for all your life. But we're brothers. Shoot the light. Yeah, oh, it's funny. It's good. It's good. <laughs> fell for a good-looking fellow in the fall, in the fall. He pledged his love with a golden ring in the spring, in the spring. Donald, do you have to keep singing that stupid song? Well, it's just one of those songs that you hear now and then. You don't know just where and you don't know just when. <laughs> it's funny, I could have sworn I locked the door on the way out. You were probably preoccupied with the thought of bowling with Tito and Vince. I wasn't preoccupied. I was obsessed. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> What's this? Looks like MTV. What are those girls wearing? <laughs> I believe those are chainsaws. <laughs> now I know I didn't leave that on. Are you sure? Cliff, the only heavy metal I'm interested in is a new Mercedes with a bumper sticker that reads, I break for gymnasts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Donald, don't look now, but... There's a half-eaten hoagie on your coffee table. <laughs> from the looks of it, I'd say it's, it's a double supreme cheesesteak from Lee's Hoagie House, about two hours old with special sauce and the optional onions and peppers. Thank you, Ellery Queen. <laughs> My God, someone's been in here. Donald, calm down. Doesn't look like anything's missing. Oh, no! My silk screen of Julio Iglesias! <laughs> Thank God, they must have been heterosexuals. <laughs> well, whoever they were, they're gone. Well, at least they had the courtesy to eat and run. You know, you always think it'll happen to the other guy. And I guess it does. Thank you, Cliff, thank you. Look, are you gonna be okay? Sure. You want me to lock up on the way out? No, I need the practice. <laughs> See you later. Right. Achoo! <laughs> Oh, what a lovely day outside. I think I'll go for a long, long, long walk and who knows, maybe meet that certain someone special and move to the south of France. Forever. <laughs> Goodbye. girl, not a bowling pin. What are you doing in here? Having lunch. Want some? Put that down. I will if you will. Well, thank you. This is actually very heavy. Good. Can you turn the volume up? You're a thief. Why should I cater to you? Beats standing there crying over Tito and Vince. <laughs> Young lady, I think I'll call the authorities instead. Hey, you do that to your own cousin? What? Cousin Donald, it's me, Terry. Terry? Yeah, you don't recognize me? I've never met you. Well, this is how I look. What are you doing here? I ran away from home. But you live in Virginia. And this is Philadelphia. Hence the term runaway. I know what a runaway is. How long have you been here? I just blew into town. Blew into town? Who do you think you are, Betty Davis? <laughs> I always heard you were gay. Oh, the family's talked about me? Oh, yeah. Well, they must be worried sick about you. Not as long as I have a place to stay. 
Where are you staying? Let me put it this way. Don't wake me up before noon. <laughs> Terry, I want you to know I just called your parents. You got the machine, didn't you? Well, yes. <laughs> but I'm sure they'll call back soon. Nah, they're more worried about who gets the BMW. What are you talking about? Cousin Donald, my parents are getting divorced. Uncle Ned and Aunt Shirley? Yeah, see, Dad had this girlfriend, and Mom had this boyfriend, and from what I could hear through the wall, they all showed up at the same hot tub party together. <laughs> oh, Terry, I'm so sorry. Hey, no big deal. They have their lives and I have mine. <laughs> That's a very brave thing to say, but you're only a child. Hey, I've been around. Oh, really? <laughs> sure. I've got my own ready teller card. <laughs> oh, very sophisticated. <laughs> you got a light. So what are you doing with that? I love a good smoke after a meal. You're 13 years old. Sure, but a product of a broken home. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Thank you for taking me in, Cousin Donald. I don't know what I'd do without you. It's OK, Terry. It's OK. But I'm sure that I'm just in the way and I should leave. Terry, you're not in anyone's way. Good. Do you want the bedroom or the couch? <laughs> Probably your parents. Ask about the BMW. I want to hear who won. <laughs> hello? Yes, hello, Uncle Ned. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, she's here. Oh, yeah, she's fine. Perhaps I could put her on the first plane home. <laughs> you don't? Of course I understand you're going through a tough time. What with the hot tub prices the way they are. <laughs> but this is your daughter we're talking about. I understand. Yes, yes, oh, I'll do what I can. Always good to talk to you, Uncle Ned. My best to Aunt Shirley, your wife. <laughs> they said I should stay here, didn't they? For the time being. All right. <laughs> Terry, they said just until they sought out their lives. Well, that should see me through college. <laughs> Terry, this isn't something to joke about. You're right. I'm shattered by the whole thing. <laughs> Terry, you don't have to play games with me. I mean it. All right, but just remember, I'm in charge, okay? You bet. Thanks, Cousin Donald. <laughs> Who's this? Joe, I'd like you to meet my cousin from Virginia, Terry Maltby. Well, it's very nice to meet you. So, you're from Virginia, huh? What are you, the brains of this outfit? <laughs> Terry Joe is just being friendly. Oh, I'm sorry. I must have misunderstood. It's OK, honey. Uh, everyone, I I'd like you to meet my cousin, Terry. Oh, nice to meet you, Terry. Uh, can I get you a soda pop? Why, did you learn a new skill? <laughs> Terry, Cliff was only trying to be nice. I'm sorry, I get flustered meeting new people. Uh, I'm, uh, Lou Waters. Are you a lumberjack? <laughs> no, I see, I'm in construction. Although once I did chop down an elm tree because my kids thought it looked like the Wicked Witch of the West. You are the brains of this outfit. <laughs> Terry, be nice now. Uh, Joe, Terry's staying with me while her folks work a few things out. Like where to hide. <laughs> Uncle Lou, uh, Terry, ha have you ever been to Philadelphia before? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a brat. <laughs> uh, Terry, I, I thought you had to use the ladies' room. You mean you're done showing me off? I think so. Good. It's a lot of pressure being charming. My, my, my. What a lovely young lady. Joe, I'm sorry for her behavior, but uh, she's been going through a tough time. Her, her parents are getting divorced, and she needs a little extra attention. What she needs is to learn some respect. 
Please, I think I know what she needs, which is some love and affection, and to know she has a friend. Oh, so you're the expert on kids now, huh? I think I know what she needs. <laughs> Donald, take it from me, there's nothing worse than a young girl with an attitude. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Please, I appreciate your concern, but her tough attitude is just a front. Oh, well, in that case, let's pass the hat and buy her a car. Please, I know she's not much on social graces, but I remember when my parents split up, I felt abandoned and hurt. So I struck out against the world. I guess a child's mind believes that disrespecting others brings a greater respect for oneself. And in time, the pain passes. Yeah, I'd ground her. <laughs> Donald, if you love him, you gotta be tough. Do you know how many times I grounded Penny? I still say I was innocent. All 46 times. <laughs> hey, but you turned out great. Believe me, Joe, I won't have to resort to that with Terry. Hey, Cousin Donald, are we done here yet or what? Well, I thought maybe we'd have lunch. Skip lunch. Let's hit a record store. Terry, you need to start eating right. And this is the place you picked? <laughs> Terry. Cousin Donald, you said you'd take care of me, and I really want to go to a record store. Okay, after we eat. No, now! Okay, okay, we'll go now. Good, come on! She just needs some more time. Of course she does, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> There, now isn't that better? Better than what? Terry, please, it's very hard for me to cook or even think with that racket on. Racket? That's just what my father used to call it. Why does something I love have to be called racket? Okay, okay, you can turn it up. A little bit. Thank you. back on when you leave. I thought we might talk instead. Why? Indulge me, okay? Penny. Uh, Terry, can, can we sit down? Do we have to? Yes. <laughs> Terry, I know exactly how you feel. Bored? <laughs> No, hurt. Who said I was hurt? I know you're hurt. I was hurt, too, when my parents got divorced. You were? Yes, but after the divorce, I knew they still cared about me. Why? <laughs> because they loved me, that's why. Even though you stick your nose into other people's business? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Tell me. <laughs> When your parents got divorced, was there a custody battle or did they just draw straws? <laughs> Look, honey, I came here to try to be nice. Cousin Donald, Penny is yelling at me. <laughs> Penny, what are you doing? Dreaming of a muzzle. <laughs> Donald, she's a mean lady. No, she's not. She said my parents are getting divorced because of me. I did not, you little girl. 
girl. <laughs> Penny, uh, I think you better leave. Donald, this girl is trouble. Penny, please. Yeah, Penny, please. <laughs> Adios, Mufulo. Hey, gang. Hey, Pen. Oh, Penny, could I talk to you for a minute? What's up, Uncle Lou? Well, now Flo Jr. wants to go out with this guy, Lynn Fong. Says he used to go out with his older brother. Oh, yeah, Lance Fong. <laughs> what I want to know is, uh, Lynn and Lance, good people. Oh, sure. I hear they both won a national science contest with their study of the female anatomy. Men are such pigs. <laughs> Greetings, Keepers of the Flame. Hey, Donald. Oh. Oh. Are you alone, or is Cousin It with you? <laughs> Joe, I know that Terry isn't much on first impressions, but I don't think she deserves to be called a member of the Adams family. <laughs> She's really making major strides. Yeah, I thought I saw some footprints on your chest. <laughs> I'll have you know I've arranged a tutor for Terry and that she was very excited to resume her studies. Oh, you sound like quite the proud papa. Well, it's nice to know there's still a place in the world for gentle child rearing. Donnie, 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 I tell you, I couldn't agree with you more. Really? No. <laughs> you see, I raised two girls of my own, and I ain't saying they're perfect, but like E. Emily Hutton, when I talk, they hear me. Well, Terry listens to me. Donnie, there's a thin line between listening and hearing. Listening is, uh, yes, Father. Hearing is, I ain't never talking to you again! <laughs> and believe me, you never feel closer to a daughter than when she ain't talking to you. Well, I don't have to yell to get my point across. Donald, I think it's a physical thing. Most girls' ears don't fully open till they're 18. Are you speaking about me? See, two years ago, she wouldn't have heard a word I said. <laughs> well, Donald Morphy doesn't believe in raising his voice. Hey, Cousin Donald, you won't believe what just happened. Terry, I thought you were with the tutor. I was, but I'm afraid she had to run out. Why? Her toes caught on fire. What? It was great. It. There she was, talking about nouns and verbs, like anyone gives a flyer. <laughs> when I rolled a piece of paper and stuck it in her shoe and struck a match. You can imagine the rest. <laughs> Terry, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. It was great! No, Terry, it was mean. Come on, Cousin Donald, where's your sense of adventure? What do you mean, where's my sense of... <laughs> adventure. <laughs> Score a couple of tickets to the Bon Jovi concert tonight. I'm not interested in any Bon Jovi concert. Cousin Donald, it wouldn't be the same without you. You're the one with the car. I don't think our going to a concert is such a good idea. All right, then I'll go myself. See you after the show. Terry! Who are you, Otter? <laughs> you believe that? Where does she get off? Oh, did Mount Fufu blow his top? Of course not. I was just concerned. <laughs> Little of that. <laughs> Sounds real exciting. So, did you have a nice time at the concert? It was heaven. Have a good seat? I forced my way to the front. <laughs> Terry, could we sit down for a little chat? Nah, I think I'll just eat. Terry, please. Okay. Okay, what's up? Terry, when my parents split up, I was mad at the world, too. And, in fact, I did a few crazy things myself. Like what? Well, I've never told anyone, but once I spray-painted a likeness of Victor Mature on the side of my high school building. <laughs> That's quite a story. Can I eat now? What I'm trying to say is, 
It's okay to feel hurt, but there's no reason to hurt others along the way, especially when they're only trying to help. What a lovely thought. And you understand what I'm saying? If I say yes, can I eat my sandwich? Of course. Thank you. Pretty hungry? Yeah. Mmm, tastes good? Great. Can I get you anything else? Some chips might be nice. Some chips might be nice. <laughs> Put that down. But I'm hungry. Then starve. <laughs> Look, Missy, you came here to run away. I told your parents, fine, I'll take care of you. And what do you do? You insult my friends, you disregard my wishes, and you give an elderly woman a hot foot. Cousin Donald, are you yelling at me? How dare do you think you can come in and walk all over me? Do you think I was born yesterday? Do you think I was never your age? Do you think I might worry about where you are and what you're doing? Do you, th do you think at all? You are yelling at me. I have never yelled at anyone in my life. But you, you're different. You're smart. You're sharp. You don't have to be obnoxious to get attention. No one's ever yelled at me before. Well, they probably didn't know how much fun it could be. <laughs> Cousin Donald, you really mean it. What are you talking about? You're yelling at me because you're mad. No, I'm yelling because I've always loved opera. Of course I'm mad. No one's ever been mad at me before. What? No one. My mom and dad never yelled. I guess they were worn out yelling at each other. This isn't another trick, is it? If I knew a trick like that, I would have used it on my parents a long time ago. Terry. Just because your parents don't yell doesn't mean they don't love you. Then why am I like this? It's not easy being the one in the middle. Cousin Donald, there's something I haven't told anyone either. What's that? I, I miss being home. Maybe your parents might like to hear that. I gotta admit, Mom and Dad, when they finished fighting, would peek their heads into my room and make sure I was faking my sleep. I bet they miss you. Nah, they're too busy sorting things out. Terry, it's not going to be easy for you to go home. But at some point, you're going to have to deal with the situation. Who says? I have a feeling you will. Hey, I've been known to speak my mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, what the heck. Maybe I'll go home and let them see what they're missing. Right on. Something older people say. <laughs> How about that sandwich now? I think I'd love it. <laughs> you know, we Maltbees have always been a breed apart. Fiercely independent, but always with an eye on family. It's nice to know that that same spark carries on. <laughs> Carry on, Terry. Carry on. Hey, where's my sandwich? You stinker. You <laughs> <you're> <laughs>